It is blooming Friday. Welcome to the weekend. Hacking Self Storage here. Well, actually, Dean here on Hacking Self Storage. Um, so today, what I want to do is talk to you about how I find a site uh, because I get so many questions about how do you find a site? What do you do? Da, 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 da. And so um, I thought what I'd do is do a podcast about it and explain my process. Now, it's um, I get questions about feasibility studies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I know in America, feasibility studies, feasibility studies are the hot word right now. And everybody's talking about feasibility studies and they can range from 5,000 pounds up to 20,000 pounds to get a feasibility study. Now, if you're in America, I would 100% urge you to get a feasibility study because it's all about demographics and movement of the population, et cetera. But in England, I don't believe the population moves that much. And yes, I want to see a graph of where the population is going just to make sure it's not a decrease in town however america is big wide and vast and people move a lot around a lot more than they do in the uk we're we're more populated in certain areas so i wouldn't i wouldn't so much worry about the feasibility the demographics of of a population etc because i just don't think it's relevant i don't think it's relevant in this country and we're, at the end of the day if you are listening to this and you about a new in a uk citizen then it, a feasibility study as in the words of the us isn't really as relevant as it is here, but there still needs to be a process. You still need to go through things. Um, I've been looking at some sites for other individuals. And, and by the way, this isn't something I do. Um, and so it, it's only because I was doing it for a, a couple of favors and stuff. So um, I, I would love to help everybody out. But honestly, I, I just I just can't. I was talking to Dave Davies yesterday and uh, my job is to grow my business at the minute. And as much as I, I'd love to help people out and do feasibility studies and go on the road and look at it, I just, I, I haven't got the capacity. Um, so I thought rather than, rather than um, do it for everybody else, I just, I just thought I'd tell you what I look for. And I probably missed out something. I've spent half an hour going through thinking, okay, what do I actually look for? Because I haven't got a, a list. I don't actually have a list. I just, I just go through and just research, research and research and research. I've just gone through and done a quick list about what I look for to find a site. And it is tough to find a site, but when you found a good site, you need to go for it. I was with Dave Davies yesterday because Dave Davies was finding me a, a site. Well, not finding me a site. He was giving me the stamp of approval and I officially got the stamp of approval for Dave Davies for this new site. So I'm putting an offer into there and we will see where that takes us. And then obviously when things are, are hard and fast and done, then I will let you guys know, but I can't let you guys know just yet because I don't want nobody hugwinking me on this one. Um, and basically uh, Dave, Dave was giving me grease in. I get people coming up to me and go, fucking hell, mate. It's a fucking no-brainer. Fucking no-brainer. <laughs> and he goes, will you stop doing that? And I was like, no, Dave, that's exactly what you do. I goes, go on, say it to me, say it to me. Anyway, so uh, I got the stamp for it. It was a great day. I loved it. Loved spending time with Dave. And he said, well, fucking hell, mate. This is fucking brilliant. <laughs> I was like, yes, it is. So we've got, this, we've got the stamp of approval. But how did I find this site? Well, I have a list. As you guys know, I have a list um, of... Of all the towns in the UK, I have a list with them towns with the self-storage facilities that are there. And I earmark certain towns and certain mm, cities, if you like, some cities, there is some cities on there that I earmark as fantastic opportunities. And so all you've got to do is just be persistent and you've got to understand that it will take some time. And so if you're looking for a site and you want one today, you, you just won't find one. This particular location, I've been around this location for two years, for two years around this location, and I couldn't have found a better site. It is on the it, it's, it's on a it's on a major road, let's just say that. You couldn't get a better one. As soon as they pull up, he goes, Well, this is it. Wow, we're done. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was like, that's it. That's we're not as professional as, as Americans with feasibility studies of the demographics of the movement of people, population. But here's what I look for. And so firstly, I just want to say that we do have a new site if we can if we can sort out the contracts, because there is a problem with this site. It does have leaky roofs, believe it or not. It has, I've been told that it's got 12 leaks on the roof. And the the agent didn't tell me that. The agent said there's only one leak. And the tenants, the current tenants, have told me there's 12 leaks. Um, and then there's other problems with the property. So there is some things that we need to iron out first. I can't just go, yeah, there's a price, I'll pay it because uh, we, we want a better deal than that because it just doesn't work at the minute. And so um, I will update you guys on that as and when it happens, but it is a great location. And uh, yeah, so we've been given the, the DD stamp of approval, douche, which is good. Right, so what do I look for? So I put finding a site, the process. 
Right, I look at the town's population. First and foremost, I need, that, that's number one. What is the population of a potential town? And so you can easily Google that. And then when we have a look at the population, I just want a population graph. And so I want maybe 20 years and to say, you should be seeing steady growth. And very, very few times have I seen decreasing population. If there's a decrease in population, I want to know why. Now, is it because the highest employer in the area has gone bust or have they uh, or are not taking on as many as many workforce as they used to? What is the reason? Because the employment is very, very crucial. But most places in America, yes, because uh, I'm on all these courses and they talk about demographics and the employment. And if, if somebody moves, uh, it's very, very rare in the UK that an employer will move you know 2000 jobs and take it from there to somewhere else where in america that happens quite regular because of the of the different areas different states have different laws and depending on tax etc and so when one person puts up the taxes etc i think it's california at the minute crazy tax then everybody migrates everybody moves and therefore it, it you need to know that where in the, in the uk we don't have different states with different taxations we have one and so Therefore, it's not as crucial and critical as it is in the UK. But I still want to see that graph. I still want to know if there's a decrease in population. What is There's a reason for it, but what is the reason? And so if there's no decrease in population, I am fine. So this place I'm looking for, I look at, I can't, I can't tell you too much about it. But yeah, the, the population is good. And people say, is there a minimum population? No. I, well, there was obviously, obviously a minimum population. I wouldn't want to look for anything under 10,000. But you've got to remember that the higher the population, then the higher the fill up but the higher, the more competition you're gonna have. So there's yin and yang as a balancing act. Right, and then what I do is I look at the current self-storage sites and you have gotta remember not all sites are equal. Like for example, Storefest, they have stupid prices and stupid um, monthly, you know, three months free and stuff like that. But ultimately that's because of how they have, <laughs> gotta be careful, I don't wanna be sued by Storefest, but they've gotten a lot of trouble with how they've, they've got the money together and they do the pension scheme, et cetera, and things like that. And so it's not in different rooms are owned by different people individually. And it's all about return on investment for the pension funds. And so it's, it's a weird formula. So they do it a lot cheaper. They can afford to do it a lot cheaper. So I want to know, is, is your store fair, sir? And I've been told they're not too bad to trade against, but all things being equal, do I really want to trade against store first? Not really. Uh, big yellow is, you know, so the, the, the big, big, big boys, obviously most of them know what they're doing. If not all of them know what they're doing. And so I want to go into a location, but probably I, I would take on a big boy. We are taking on big boys with Armadillo. We're taking on big boys in different places. It doesn't mean you can't win. It just means that they will know what you're doing. So you can't add any value to it. There's, there's going to be, I mean, we, we believe that we run our, our ship tighter because we, we care more. And so we've got A players. We took the A players off Armadillo, for example. And by the way, for the Armadillo staff that are still there, I, don't, I, don't, I just mean that we took, not, not that you guys are A players, I mean, we just took Angela, the manager. She was the manager of Armadillo. We took her because she was awesome. And, and now she runs our site. Um, but we all care. We're, we're a close-knit community. We care about the customers. We can do more. We can do more than the big boys because we've got more wiggle room. We've got more movement. And so we, we you know, there's a, a structure and a format that you've got to be stick to. Uh, with, with us, we can be a little bit more flexible for certain things that we can give the customers different customer care. And so it's not saying I wouldn't take on a big boy. I don't mind taking on big boys at all. But you've just got to remember that not all self-storage sites are equal. I'd much rather take on independent because I know there will not be an independent out there that is run as well as we are. I feel bad now because I'm thinking, shit, loads of people listen to this who are independents and I'm saying, no, nah, I'm better than you. Nah, 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 nah. I don't mean that at all. Well, I, I clearly do. <laughs> but hopefully you get my point that you'd rather take on independence because most independents, most independents, you could improve on their on their systems, their procedures, their, their follow-up sales. You could improve on their insurance. You, you could improve on most independents. So I'd rather take on independence. So remember, not all self-storage sites are even. And when I first got this list, I used to think, ah, oh, 50,000 location. Oh, God, there's already five self-storages. So I just crossed that one off. And I'm thinking, wait a second. What are the five self-storage? Oh, there's A, B, C, D, E, F containers. Right. So are they going to be competition? Probably not. Let's have a click. Let's have a look at the website. Let's have a look at the, how I filled it out. There's a um, there's a place that I've been looking at, this, in, this new place I was on about. Um, and I was like, oh, man, there's, there's a lot of self-storage there. But there was all independence. And I'm like, holy shit, you can't actually get a price. You cannot put in your details and get a price. You've actually got to email them or ring them to get a price and you've got to wait till they get back to you and thinking, oh, right, okay, there's an opportunity here. And so remember, not all self-storage sites are even. Um, 
And so I want to I want to know the population and I want to know what self storage is in there. What self storage is currently in that town, that city, in that area. And then I look at SEO. I think that's a really good way of understanding what type of competition you're against because uh, aggregate uh, aggregators ranking. So they're the people who um, uh, we sell storage, for example. I don't even think there's one called that. But aggregators have many, many. It's like Yell.com for self storage. So they aggregate all the all the self storage. It's like square foot in America, um, and they they list out all the self storage. If they're ranking, if aggregators are ranking, then you know that you can beat the aggregators. If you're not beating the aggregators and you're a CEO, you're doing something fundamentally wrong. So do aggregators rank? highly um do big self-storage companies rank that are in the location for example um i think in preston or somewhere i'm just giving an example i don't know some storefest was ranking for somewhere that wasn't actually in that location and when i had a look it was 30 minutes away i was like holy shit and because all they put is for example storefest near preston and I'm like, how the hell are you ranking for that just because you put near Preston? So that means that the SEO, there's a, there's a definite gap there. So you can you can position yourself well. Um, so I want to know what the SEO people are doing. Um, and then I want to I want to work out what square foot per capita, how much square foot per capita is there? And I was, I was talking about this the other day to a few people. And I'm not too bothered now about the competition, how much square foot there is. Yes, I don't want to be going into a place where there's two square foot, three square foot per capita. But if there's, if there's one or around one square foot per person for that place, so if there's 100,000 uh, population and there's already you know, 70, 80, 90,000 population there, I'm okay going into there. Yes, you can find better opportunities, but I'm okay. As long as I can outposition the current, the, the current um, competition, then I'm okay with that. And so I want to look at the approximately approximate availability of self storage, and I want to know what that will mean. Is it one square foot per person? Is it 0.7 square foot per person? Because currently, before the report comes out next month or next yeah next month, um, that is the current average square foot per capita is 0.74. And if there's anything below 0.74 or around 0.74, you're onto a winner. You're onto a massive winner. And you can you can find out the approximate square footage because you, there's there's great Google tools where you can go on Google Maps and you can draw a line around the around the area, around the building, and you can actually find out the square footage of that building. So if it's 10,000 square foot, you know the lettable square foot is going to be 70% of that. So you know there's 7,000 square foot of lettable square foot there. And you also might have to drive to find out if it's two, three, four, four stories. You don't know because on Google Maps, it won't tell you that. And then you just times it by two, three, four, whatever it is. And so that's an easy way. It, the, the tools are out there now. It's much, much easier. Um, so you want to know the approximate self-storage current availability. And for example, if it's a container site, dead easy again. You just ring them up. You ring them up. You do the hard way. You ring them up and you, just, uh, you start talking to them. And you go, wow, by the way, how many containers have you got? You just drop it into conversation. Most people will love to tell you because they're proud of how many containers they've got. If it's 80, 70, whatever, you can just say 70, 80. And you go, oh, wow, are they all 20 foot? So you have different sizes. And then so you can approximately guesstimate the actual square footage that they've got available. Then what I want to do is I want to get uh, understanding of the competition. So I want to look at the competition as well. I want to do a deep dive into their website. I want to see, right, can I improve their website? Is their website good, good enough? Can we, uh, do, does it have call to actions? Does it have testimonials? Does it, does it fit the normal self, the, the normal marketing that, that can we improve on their website basically? Can we get higher conversion rates in them? Can, are they explaining what they do good enough to, the, to their customers? Most independent sites, it's 100% a no. I'm a stickler for, for websites and you, that's your shop front. That is your shop front. It's the most important thing. And so for me, your website is crucial. It's critically important. So, and I want to ring them up. I want to talk to them. I want to see what their what their sales process is like. Um, I, I want to know how full they are. I want to work out what price per square foot they're getting. I want to know what the site looks like as well. What is their curb appeal? And that means getting in your car and doing the hard yards and driving there. Right. Um, and then once... Um, once I, I know their sites, I want to look at their sites and think, okay, where are they on the map? Can I outposition the, those people? If I can't outposition them, then I'm not saying I will never go there, but it's it's definitely a cross in the box. I don't. I want to be the best location for me when we come to sell in 20, 30 years. If if we come to sell or if pass it on to the kids, I don't know. Um, 
I, I don't want to be out positioned. I want to make sure that we're on A roads, main roads. Da, 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 da. That is my number one for me. It's different for everybody else because I was talking to somebody else and they said, yeah, 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 I get it. You get more price per square foot, but you pay more rent per square foot. I'm happy being on the back of an industrial estate because I can charge less because I'm paying less. 100% agree. That, that if that works for you, that works for you. But for me, I want to future-proof myself. And the way I can see me future-proofing myself is by getting a great location the, so we can't be out-positioned. So can they be out-positioned? And then once you've been through all that and you've ticked all them boxes and you think, yes, this town or city looks good, then what I, I found the, the best thing for me is two things. You've got to drive around. You just got to continuously drive around because... You don't, you can't see everything online. You don't find everything online. This site that we're going for now, I didn't find it online. I found it through somebody else who was on the boots on the ground in that area. And that's where, that's where, how I found it. So that's where, that's, so it's important just to, the, the Americans call it driving for dollars. You've got to drive around. You've got to make sure you drive around and you find the site. So that's what, that's what, I, I, that's how I do it. And so I drive around and I speak to local commercial agents as well. So I build up a relationship with them and make sure they understand what I'm looking for. And they'll be more than happy to help you because obviously it's a deal for them if they let it sell it to you. So it's important. So I drive around and speak to agents. So they're the two most important things to find in a site. Um, and then put, and then I put other sites in the same area. Um, are the sites in the same area as you? Oh, uh, is the competition in the same area as you? Ideally, you want them uh, a mile away or something. But if yeah, it depends on what, like I said, not all self-story sites are, are even. So um, most important thing to me is find a, find a good location. And then I want to know what is your three and five mile population. So draw a line. There is tools out there on Google where you draw a line around it. I mean, at the minute you've the paid for, um, we haven't found any free ones, but I want to I want to draw a, a circle around it. And I want to know what the population is around, around that area. And it's, it's not going to change it for me because um, it, it's just... I, I, probably because I've been inbred, inbred? I've been bred um, up with the, the Americans, what they do with a three and five mile radius or one mile radius and the feasibility studies or how they do things. And so it is, it is good to know. It is good to know what the population is, a three mile circle, five mile circle from your facility. And then I want to do a traffic count. How many cars are passing my location? We did a traffic count the other day, me and Dave Davies, and we got over a thousand cars passing at, um, uh, on, on off peak. A thousand cars an hour passing off peak on this location. And I do think we was unlucky when we was doing it. And normally it's a lot, lot busier than that. Um, I mean, Clough Road as well, that's over 2,000 uh, cars passing an hour. It is mental. But this this is a brilliant location. And it's close to town centre as well. So Google Maps will be working for us. So that ultimately, I don't know why I keep, keep hitting my hand. Um, that is ultimately how we find a location. Um, I'm sure I've missed out stuff and what I'll keep doing, I'll keep adding to it because now I've got, now I've got a run down on my Google Docs. Um, I will keep adding to, adding to this. So if I do miss anything out and there's, there's more and more, fill up, I'll do another podcast episode about this because I've only just done it in half an hour. It's kind of like, it's on autopilot. So I know how to do it for myself, but then how do I teach other people to do it? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't really know. It's just an autopilot. So I went through the process. Okay, let's have a look at, um, say, Walkingham. Um, walking about, I don't know. And and let's have a look at right. If I was looking for self storage, what would I be doing here? And so I just I've just listed out what I'd be doing. And so I'll keep adding to it every single time I look at locations and stuff because um, I I love it. It's, for me, it's not. Um, I, I enjoy looking at other self storages. And I've just found out, by the way, as well, Berry self storage. You cheeky weeky monkeys. You are using my. I mean, you ain't even tried to hide it. Um, you are using my self storage pictures. And I got a message this morning from somebody saying, are you anything to do with berry cell stories? I'm like, no, I haven't even heard of them. And normally I've, I've had, I, I, I like to make sure that I know a lot about everybody's self storage. And um, we spent a lot of money on, on our pictures and our drawings. And don't get me wrong, I, I'm not bothered. I'm not going to contact them or anything. I'm just thinking they're cheeky, cheeky little monkeys. And they've actually used our pictures, the pictures that, oh, what's the word? I've forgotten it. Um, but we've actually used for, to display our units, what you can get in units and stuff. And, and we spent a lot of money on that. However, that was a lot of money five years ago. You can get, you can, there's, 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 there's software out there now that can, can do this for you really, really cheap. And it actually said Stormore on it. They've actually, they didn't even change the name from, from you know, Berry Self Storage. So they've, they've used the same pictures of we've done. They still put Stormore on there. So I thought that was awesome. And then another another company in, in Leeds as well did um, did a, a fake quote of us yesterday, another self-storage in Leeds. I won't say the name of it because I don't actually know the name of it. And there might be, 
and the, the, everything fake apart from a telephone number. So we looked up the telephone number and we saw it as another self storage. And so they might be doing that just to do the sale, just to see our sales process, what it's like. But I just wanted to let you know that obviously we know it's a self storage, we know it's a fake quote. So we're not going to do our, our follow up process on it. Just um, the, the, the message me saying, look, just in case that the team messaged me and said, just in case they do get back in touch with you and say your follow up process sucks because you didn't contact us. The reason why we're not contacting and doing the follow up process is because we know it's a fake quote and we're not, we haven't really got time to just do it for the sake of it. Um, so that's why we're not doing the follow-up process. But if anybody wants to know our follow-up process, I've done a podcast episode about our follow-up process. We have actually changed it recently as well. We've had a meeting and we've changed our follow-up process. So I might do another podcast. I'll have to have, to have a look, see how much it's changed. Um, but follow-up is key for me. Um, and yeah, it's, well, I'm just thinking, well, some people have show the prices online and don't have any follow-up process and that seems to work for them, which is wonderful if it works for them. But for me, I just believe that the follow-up process, getting to know your customers is crucial, so important because they might need a bigger unit, a smaller unit. They might need to understand about insurance. I just feel like that I like talking to our customers and it works for us. And so the follow-up process, getting that right, getting your five magic questions down is, is wonderful. And it's not a difficult thing to sell in sell stories. So if anybody does want our follow-up process, then uh, just drop me an email and I'll, I'll just send you, send you a deanbooty at iCloud.com. I'm back in the game now. I've had three weeks off and I know I've got shit loads of messages to catch up on. And I apologize everybody, but I'm back in the game now, deanbooty at iCloud.com. And I will just email you the template of, of our follow-up process. Um, and I was talking to Dave yesterday. He goes, he goes, what what do you think about competition? What what do you think about about the competition? You know that that you might be educating your um, your rivals, and somebody might come into Hull. And so I said, firstly, Dave, somebody's going to come into Hull. It, it's going to happen. Yes, it's quite saturated at the minute, but still, somebody will be coming into Hull because what's saturated now won't be saturated in five years' time. So we'll get somebody else. And so whether it's because of my podcast or because of the opportunity, there's there's going to be somebody there. And I'm not scared of competition. If you're scared of competition, then you're doing something wrong yourself. You do, you're do fundamentally something wrong in your business if you're worried about the competition. So you need to be worried about yourself first and foremost. And I know there's a lot of, of shit going on in the self-storage at the minute, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. The old guard are trying to protect themselves and they don't like people like me educating other people and telling the world. I go on commercial real estate podcasts all the time and I want to tell everybody how wonderful self-storage is for me, uh, to, to, for, for them, for their families, for, for cash flow, for everything, for businesses. And the reason why is because I'm not scared of other people coming in. I don't want to be greedy and just, oh, it's all mine. Don't really tell anybody about self-storage. Let's keep this secret for ourselves. What a load of shit. I, it pisses me. I, I don't get me started on this. Honestly, there's very, very few things that wind me up in life, but this pisses me off. Absolutely pisses me off. If you're worried about the competition, it's because you're not good enough. It's because you're doing something fundamentally wrong. What I am worried about is having uneducated competition. Uneducated competition is problematic. So it, what I mean is, Exactly like the process I'm going through now. If you follow that process and you make sure that you're not building anywhere that has over one square foot of self-storage per capita, then you're going to be okay. Your competition is going to be okay. It's not going to affect your competition. It's not going to affect you. And everybody can li li live in harmony. It's not, if somebody comes into, let somebody come into Beverly. As you know, my landlord listens to this podcast and thought, oh, hello, minute. I'm going to live, I'm going to open up Beverly. Fine, no problem. Because because I've told everybody the square, there was 30,000 population and there was only me and another farm that were doing self-storage. So there was clearly another uh, position available for another self-storage. He, he's coming and he's, I don't know, I presume he's doing okay. I think he's doing okay. And that's, that's fine because it hasn't affected me one iota. It might be affected us smallly on the conversions, but we're over 90% full. So, I mean... It, it's a, if, but now, if somebody else opens in Beverly, that for me is an uneducated competition because they're coming into the market where the, there isn't there isn't space for anybody else now in Beverly, and it's saturated. There's three self storages in Beverly. We're saturated, and so if anybody else comes in, then it is going to affect me. It's going to affect them. It's going to affect the comp my competition. It's going to affect all of us. So I'm frightened of uneducated people coming into self-storage. If you're educated, you would never, ever come into Beverly now because you know that it's a 30,000 population. There's around about that much self-storage now. There's not there's probably a little bit more um, than 0.74 square foot per person, but it works for all three of us. All three of us are doing well. But if somebody else comes into this market, it will it'll be detrimental to me, to them, to the, to the, and so 
if you, and so that's what that's why I put all this out there, all this information. Because if you're an educated self storage owner, then we can all live in harmony. We can all work well together, and we can all make a damn bloody good wage, a bloody good living. Um, but and so for people giving people grief about the for me, for example, putting education out there, the self storage association putting information out there. What a load of crock! Because we're educating the market. What other industry doesn't want to grow? Doesn't want more people coming in? It's ridiculous. And the only reason people are worried is because there's millionaires out there who've been millionaires from self-storage who didn't have a clue. And if and but the problem is, it's because it's been so easy. You don't have to be good to make money in self-storage at all right now, but you'll have to be better and better and better and better and better. And eventually, it's the market is the market is the market. The market will tell you if you're good or not. And years ago, you could have been you could have been terrible and made money out of self storage. Now you just don't have to be good to make money out of self storage. In the future, you're probably going to have to be good to make money out of self storage. But that's our job to improve. We've got to improve all the time. We can't just rest on our laurels and expect nobody else to come into self storage. And only the original founders of self storage can be in self storage. It just bloody annoys me. It's absolutely ridiculous. Self storage is going to grow. It's no secret anymore. And do you know what? It's going to exponentially grow because more and more people are telling when commercial real estate are talking about self storage, bigger pockets are talking about self storage, the bigger pockets podcast. I want to shout it from the world because why? I just think a rising tide rises all boats so that it's the best. Uh, I want other people to do well. I want my landlord who's set up in competition against me. I want him to be doing good. I don't want him, don't get me wrong, I want to be doing better than him. And if it's me or him, I want it to be me. And I, I love competition. But I equally, I equally don't think it's my God-given right just because I'm in Beverly first that nobody else should open up in Beverly. And I'm in Hull, so nobody else should open up in Hull. I'm in, you know, wherever. I just, I just, I just don't subscribe to that. And so I think that if you're worried about the competition, then you've you've got something bigger to worry about than, than the competition. You should be looking at your internal processes, what you do and how you interact with your staff, with, with your processes, whatever it may be. Anyway, that's a little bit off my mind. Uh, <laughs> like I said, I very, very rarely have a, I don't know, nothing really bugs me, but it just, what is wrong with all people doing well? I want you to do well. I want me to do well. I want everybody to do well. And as long as we're all educated self-storage owners, then we will do well. It's the uneducated people coming to self storage. That's what we've got to be aware of. And that's why it's good for programs like this. It's good for training. I mean, I can't believe there's not any courses on self storage out there. I can't believe that an institute or somebody hasn't set up some sort of, some sort of self storage school because you'd be inundated, you'd be flooded. I mean, the amount of people who keep asking me to do a mastermind. And yes, it's something that's on my mind all the time. And should I do it? Should I do it? Blah, blah, blah. And I will make what decision one way or another very, very soon. Um, but it should be out there. There should be there should be training because people want to improve. They want to get better, and there's there's a need for it. There's a want for it. And there's a desire for it, and so we've got to facilitate that. Anyway, that is my little moan about the situation. Um, I'm out of here. See you soon. Bye.